Good afternoon, everyone. This is, my name is April from Board of, or Public Works. This is the Board of Public Works meetings regularly scheduled for March 26th at 5.30 p.m. We do have some um, attendees via Zoom. And once we get to your agenda items, I will ask you to unmute and then you can speak um, for your agenda item. If you are just a member of the public and would like to speak, you can e either leave your remark in chat or raise your hand and you will be called upon. And I will turn it over to Kyla Cox Decker to start the meeting. Thank you. I call to order this regular meeting of the Board of Public Works this Tuesday, March 26th of 2024. First up on the agenda, we have messages from board members. Do we have any messages from the board this evening? Next, we have Title VI abatements. Uh, first, we have abatement at 410 South Highland. Hi, good evening. Chris Wheeler with City Legal. Uh, the packet submitted to the board for this item uh, shows uh, evidence to support uh, abatement of the property at 410 uh, South Highland Street. Uh, you'll see that there is a GIS uh, property report card uh, which uh, evidences that Stephen Patterson is the owner of this real estate. Uh, you'll also see the notices of violation that were submitted. Uh, these were all issued by Rob Council, a housing and neighborhood development inspection officer who uh, went out on those dates and personally observed garbage, rubbish, trash uh, deposited on the property, all in violation of Bloomington Municipal Code Section 6.06.020. Uh, we believe there is substantial evidence in the form of photographs of the property taken by Rob Council uh, and Rob Council's own uh, uh, issuance of these notices of violation uh, that established the need to abate the property. Uh, the notices of violation were served on the owner by mailing the NOVs to the owner's last known address, which is all in accordance with Bloomington Municipal Code uh, at the property address uh, that you'll see um, the notice of the city's request to abate was served on the owner uh, of the property by certified mail. And what I didn't see in the packet was the return uh, receipt. And I'm going to provide that to the board at this time, if I may. And uh, so that certified mailing shows compliance with Bloomington Municipal Code for notice uh, to the owner of the property with regards to our request to abate. The city is requesting a continuous abatement order, and if approved by the board or so ordered, that continuous abatement would then expire uh, October 6, 2024. Uh, Mr. Council is here, and I'd like him to testify briefly just about his observations of the property. Hello, members of the board, Rob Council, Compliance Officer, Hand Department. Um, the property in question has a continuing history. It's been abandoned for a while. The property owner is, in my opinion, heading towards demolition by neglect on the property. We do have an active unsafe order going on that Mike Arnold in our department is also heading. Um, really, with this abatement, I'm hoping to at least have the lawn trimmed down because it was really bad last year and some of the garbage picked up and that would allow us to maintain keeping that lawn in a presentable state. Be happy to answer any questions you guys have. Um, that was one question I had was I saw that there were violations both for scattered, you know, garbage, refuse, whatever, and then also overgrowth. Uh, yes, are we now, con are we considering the property b to be in violation of both those elements of that, Title VI? That is correct. Currently, students seem to be throwing their stuff in this abandoned house, and it's at this point spilling out across the property. So I would like to get that at least cleaned up and then the yard maintained. The notices of violation, there are some periods of time between the dates, but after the first two, I think, listed, it went from a warning straight to the $100 fine. That is correct. Um, at that point, when I wrote the initial ticket, somebody did come in with a bush hog and bring it down a bit, um, and so I kind of let it slide and kept observing the property, and after a while, it eventually became overgrown again, and it was no longer addressed. Um, I've made phone calls and mailed letters as well to the owner 
to no response. So has there ever been a continuous abatement put on this property before? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, and then um, as part of the abatement, I noticed in one of the first images of the set that um, there was an image of what looks like, you know, a garage or basement space that has um, contents inside of it. That's correct. Um, in the abatement process, does, is the city abating the lawn, um, but not what's in the interior? That's correct. We would not go into the interior until we get the unsafe order on that property. And um, at that point, I just, that's, that's out of my wheelhouse. So we will not be entering the structure. We will just be removing the trash from the property. Okay. But the unsafe order is, the process is going almost simultaneously? That is correct. Yes, okay. ma'am. Any other questions from the board on this item? Okay. Uh, do we have um, the property owner or anyone associated with the property present for comment? I have no one on Zoom. Okay. Um, with regards to overgrowth, when you were observing the property, is it is it still in a, is it in a condition now where there's overgrowth or? It's, it will be shortly with the grass growing, you know, here pretty soon. In the past, it had been an overgrowth and the only reason it came into compliance was because it went through the winter months? That's right, yes Okay. Sir. Um, when you observed the properties and issued notices of violation with regards to overgrowth, were you able to identify that that overgrowth was uh, uh, lawn, uh, in excess of eight inches? One, 100%, okay. yes, sir. All right, thank you. So uh, the order that I would have the board sign would not just be for garbage and refuse and things like that, but also uh, for uh, abatement of um, overgrowth when the city finds that there is overgrowth in that continuous abatement period, which would expire October 6, 2024. Revised. I would have to revise the order so that it reflects that. Yes, and I'm con I can do that in just a minute before the meeting is over. I'm happy to answer any additional questions. Otherwise, the city asks for an approval of the abatement request. Thank you. Do we have any public comments on this item? There's nothing to say. All right. Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the abatement at 410 South Highland. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up, we have petitions and remonstrances. Uh, before we get to the first uh, appeal item, I would like to call for any public comment that is on anything not on our agenda this evening. Um, if we have any members of the public who are interested in making public comment about something not on the agenda, uh, now is the opportunity to do so. I have nothing on Zoom. Seeing none. Uh, next, uh, we have appeal noise violation number 42022 at 1521 West Isaac Drive. Good evening, board members. Alexandrina Pratt with City Legal. A little bit after midnight on February 18, 2024, the Bloomington Police Department received a complaint um, regarding unreasonable noise at the property located at 1521 West Isaac Drive in Bloomington. Uh, Officer Aiden Southern of the Bloomington Police Department, who is here today, responded to the call and arrived at the scene at approximately 12.53 a.m. While approaching the property, Officer Southern was able to hear loud music playing and people yelling. At approximately 12.59 a.m., Officer Southern made contact with David Perdomo, who is the appellant and an occupant of the property. And appellant was issued a ticket for unreasonable noise and assessed a fine of $50. 
Bloomington Municipal Code states that it is legally sufficient evidence of a violation of the noise control provisions when sound is clearly audible to a person with normal hearing from any place other than the premises from which the source of the sound is located when the sound occurs between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. The facts established that the noise was audible um, by Officer Southern, a person of normal hearing from off the premises between the hours of 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. The ticket was issued to Mr. Perdomo, a person who by ordinance can be found to have violated the noise ordinance in that he lives at this residence. Uh, and now Officer Southern is going to briefly testify about those facts. Hello, board members. I'm Officer Southern with the Bloomington Police Department. Um, just as she has stated, uh, we were called to a noise complaint. We had a couple um, of complainants that had called throughout the night. Um, we unfortunately were busy, so it did take us a little bit of time to actually respond out there. Um, but myself and another officer responded, as well as a third officer who was off duty who resides in that same apartment building. Um, when I arrived, we could hear people yelling outside. Um, I had been informed that those people that were um, outside highly intoxicated had also came from this apartment. Um, and as I proceeded up the stairs in the hallway, I could hear um, yelling and music from the end of the hallway, which obviously got louder as I got closer. Um, we you know, then made contact. I explained the ordinance to them uh, and then issued them the citation um, just due to unreasonable noise. Do you guys have any questions for me? Questions from the board? Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, we have the appellant on Zoom, is that correct? David, you've been asked to unmute and you can state your appeal. Hi, my name is David. Uh, I'm, I was trying to start my video camera, but it's not working for some reason. Well, uh, yes, I'm, a, uh, I'm appealing the noise complaint because uh, by the time the officers came, uh, Yes, we, we, we did in fact have music, but we, we turned off the music, uh, I would say like a couple hours before they came here the, to the apartment. And on the other hand, uh, when, when I was talking to them, uh, he, uh, the officer was writing the ticket, uh, I realized the, the citation was basically, I could say blank. There was almost nothing written on it. So uh, that's one of the second main reasons why I, I'm trying to appeal the noise complaint because like the ticket was basically empty. And also by the time he came, we barely had, I would say non-music, but we didn't have music by that time for a couple hours. Thank you. Yes, and sorry about another thing. Uh, uh, I remember that he mentioned uh, it was a, come a long time ago, but he mentioned something about some noise outside. Uh, it is important to to clarify that at uh, that time there was some snow in the street. Uh, and I remember like some people playing in the snow by 11.30, 12 a.m. Uh, of that night. Um, I don't know if, if we were confused by that group of people, but if it's, if it's an option, it might be possible. We were confused by the people who were playing the snow earlier. Thank you. Any additional questions from the board? I just have a question for the officer. Um, Mr. Perdomo said that the ticket was largely blank. And so I'm just wondering as a matter of course, what portion of the ticket do you fill out when you are at the residence and what portion of the ticket do you fill out after the fact? Yeah, so the way that it works, um, so with our department, you know, we have calls that require reports and some that don't. Calls that don't require reports, we are able to enter in um, what are called call notes, which explains what we did. So if I issue a noise citation, I go back to my car, I type that into my computer just to remind myself, hey, this is what happened, this is who I talked to, I wrote a report. Um, or I wrote a call note. Our noise citation, however, we only fill out what's required. So um, I know you have the noise citation with you. If I could just see that real quick. So 
I don't know if you guys can see that from here, but basically it's pretty straightforward. So you fill out the day of the week, the time, the person that you're talking to, the address of where it is, um, their date of birth, who they are, and then it says did commit the following offense. So you can actually write that in, or you can check excessive loud noise for residents. You include um, the ordinance, you know, the ordinance code, um, and then I sign it and they sign it and date it as well. So it doesn't require it's, it's fairly blank itself. Like I'm, I filled out what was required of it. It's just there's not a lot on it. Um, it's very similar to like a traffic ticket. They, they look similar. Okay, so what, I think we have an image of what you're yeah. holding in our packet. So that was all filled out when you were at the residence, yes. except maybe the notation for the cost of the fine. Yeah, so um, that I believe is all, also written on the back of the uh, copy that he gets. So it should be printed on the back of it explaining how to pay it. Okay. Thank you very yep. much. No problem. One other um, question, because there seems to be a little bit of, uh, you know, discrepancy on the people who were outside. How did you determine that the people who were outside were associated with that residence? So um, the officer that actually resides in that apartment building, um, I believe, lives a floor or two down um, from um, this gentleman. Um, but she had contacted us. Obviously, she was off duty. She could not respond by herself. So she had contacted us, um, and I had called her while I was en route to the address. Um, and she had stated that she had watched a couple of people come out from the second floor um, or third floor, whichever floor it was, um, and come downstairs, and that she had spoken with one of them who advised they had been up in an apartment at a party on that floor. Um, and that was the only party that we had going on at the time on that floor. They potentially could have came from somewhere else, but from what they had told that officer, who again told me, it did seem like they had came from out of that apartment. Um, and they were, obviously they were fairly loud and intoxicated on the sidewalk. And you could still hear um, music from the uh, from outside of the premises when you arrived. Yeah, we could, we could hear, um, it was, it was, Kind of hard to tell whether it was music or screaming, but it was very loud. Um, we could hear it coming out the windows. And then again, as we came up the stairs, I think if you, if you really want to go back and watch my body camera footage, I think like two minutes and eight seconds in, um, you can hear the screaming from all the way down the hallway. Thank you. Any other questions on this item? All right. Um, since this is an appeal, we don't open it up for public comment, but uh, I will entertain a motion on this item. I move that we deny the appeal for the news noise violation number 42022 at 1521 West Isaac Drive. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Crone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up, we have the consent agenda. Under the consent agenda, we have approval of minutes for March 12th of 2024. Resolution 2024-011, a Fourth Street Festival. Resolution 2024-012, International Festival. Resolution 2024-013, new mobile vendor, Reyes Taco. Renewal of Hills Pet Shelter and Love Program and approval of payroll. Do we have any items that need to be removed from the consent agenda? Do we have any public comment on anything within the consent agenda? All right, seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the consent agenda for tonight's meeting of March 26, 2024. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Caron? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard, aye. Motion passes. Next up is new business. First under new business is amendment number three to preliminary engineering contract with Eagle Ridge Civil Engineering Services, LLC, for Neighborhood Greenways Project. Good evening. I'm Neil Copper with the engineering department. This is an existing contract uh, with the Etica Group, Inc., who is the successor to uh, Eagle Ridge Civil Engineering Services, LLC to complete preliminary engineering tasks for multiple neighborhood greenway projects. Um, this amendment removes design services for a trail connection on West Allen Street and adds services for a neighborhood greenway along Longview Avenue, Glenwood Avenue East, and Morningside Drive. Uh, the total contract amount increases by $25,973.60 for a new total not to exceed amount of $373,818.60. Uh, staff has reviewed and recommends approval of the amendment, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. 
questions from the board? Any public comment on this item? There's nothing on Zoom. Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve amendment number three to the preliminary engineering contract with Eagle Ridge Civil Engineering Services, LLC, for neighborhood greenway projects. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Preliminary engineering contract with Etica Group for the Dunn Street sidewalk project. Neil Copper again. This is a new project. It was prioritized by the City Council Sidewalk Committee to install sidewalk along the east side of uh, Dunn Street from 17th Street to approximately 18th Street. Uh, Etica Group was selected uh, to perform the design for this project because they have pr previously completed conceptual design on behalf of Indiana University in the same area. Um, the total contract amount for the project is set at a not to exceed of $22,230. Uh, and the next step after design would be securing construction funding from the Council Sidewalk Committee. Staff has reviewed uh, and supports this contract and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Questions from the board? Any public comments on this item? I have nothing on Zoom. All right, seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the preliminary engineering contract with Etica Group for the Dunn Street Sidewalk Project. Second. All right, I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Thanks. Thank you. Next, we have sidewalk closure requests from Tacon on North Kingston Drive. Public Works Director uh, on behalf of Kyle Ball with the Engineering Department. Uh, so take on uh, a local contractor is requesting a sidewalk closure on the east sidewalk uh, on the east sidewalk next to 123 South Kingston. This is the former marsh on the east side that's going to be uh, remodeled into a new sports store of some kind. Uh, so <clears throat> this is a request to accommodate removal of the existing concrete sidewalk to put back a new. Uh, ADA compliant uh, sidewalk and ramps. Um, they'll be doing some traffic control on three non-consecutive days and they hope to have this completed by May 2024. Uh, worked with staff on maintenance of traffic plans and all is set, so we request your approval. Thank you. Questions on this item? Uh, I'll just mention yesterday we talked in the work session about the maintenance of traffic plan and the fact that they will be able to um, route pedestrian traffic to the sidewalk that is on the other side of the street, uh, so pedestrians will be able to still um, traverse that space. Any public comment on this item? There is nothing on Zoom. Okay. Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the sidewalk closure request from TACON on North Kingston Drive. Second. All right, I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up is contract with Harold Fish, Inc. to repair condensing uh, HVAC units at 4th Street Garage. Hello. I'm Jess Goodman, the parking garage manager. Um, this uh, contract is for HFI um, to install uh, condensation pans for the HVAC units at the 4th Street Garage. Um, they are causing water pools on the concrete. Um, this they will install the pans, put the piping in, insulation on it, and the heat trace. That will keep it from freezing. And I'm asking for your approval. Thank you. Questions on this item? Adam mentioned yesterday during the work session that this is actually the second location that this has been done in. The first location, is everything working as you would suggest? Perfect. Great, yep. All right, any public comment on this item? Okay. Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the contract with Harold Fish, Inc., HFI, to repair the condensing HVAC units at the 4th Street Garage. Second. All right, I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. The motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next is staff reports and other business. Uh, good evening, 
Jason Adam Wason, Public Works Director. I uh, just want to give you an update with the AEG, um, the who, um, uh, citywide broadband project. Uh, last week, um, we had an incident at the 17th and Kinzer uh, intersection with a uh, utility strike of a gas line and a water line, um, and uh, among some other things, but um, most importantly, we did issue a stop work order to the a to AEG, um, who uh, uh, responded uh, as they should, and we're trying to seek solutions to uh, the issues that were occurring. Um, mostly, what we were dealing with, and what we've uh, um, been having some really great conversations about, is um, the permit language and how they're utilizing the right of way with vehicles, equipment, et cetera, blocking sidewalks. Uh, so staff in the engineering department had done quite a bit of monitoring and documentation of issues that they were having. Um, and then, you know, unfortunately, um, uh, even later that day was when the utility strike occurred. Um, you know, there's a lot of information out there about the utility strike um, investigation that's ongoing as far as where the utilities were marked and how they were marked and the accuracy of those. But I uh, just wanted to report to the board, we did issue the stop work order. Uh, today we had a great and productive meeting with the leadership team of AEG as well as Hoosier Fiber Networks um, and city staff to address concerns that we have, talk about the fines and notices of violations that have been levied, uh, and what process needs to be undertaken to get that project back up and running. Um, really productive conversation, had uh, AEG's senior leadership in the room, including the CEO, COO, um, project managers, et cetera. So, um, happy with the direction. We're hoping to get them uh, released from the stop work order in the next few days um, in good coordination. But I uh, did want to report back to the board that we did issue that stop work order last week um, and are making good progress. So I uh, wanted to let you know that. Uh, just additionally, um, if it wasn't a public work, if it wasn't a meeting right now in Bloomington, Indiana that didn't have the word eclipse spoken, we would not be, um, I, I don't know what would happen with the world. But um, so uh, all joking aside, uh, city staff is con uh, continuing just to coordinate uh, with all of our partners and uh, partner agencies across the community, across the county on uh, the big day of eclipse totality on April 8th. Um, so. Um, you know, we're not sure, well, uh, the estimates of what we should expect are quite shocking, but we're, um, you know, just really trying to hone in on uh, getting information out to the public in general and those that are visiting uh, the area for, for that day on, you know, just safety tips, how, how to, ex what to expect and, um, you know, uh, all of that. So just want to thank our partners with the university, uh, with Mineral County Emergency Management, all the public safety agencies, uh, uh, everyone's coming to the table and working together on this one. So it's going to be a great big day in Bloomington and we won't have another meeting before then, will we? Uh, so we will, we're not going to do the work session that Monday and we'll just have our regularly scheduled Tuesday meeting. Um, and we hope the skies are clear and all goes well that day. So, yeah, just a little. Any, uh, any kind of previews of what we might expect in terms of um, the, the rights of way? I've heard some rumors about um, yeah. ambulance lanes on the bypass and, and one way directions on some of the state highways. It, it, so, that correct? Um, what I can tell you is that all the public safety agencies are keeping the hospital in mind when they're uh, thinking about traffic management. Um, you know, obviously public safety vehicles are always going to have the right of way uh, when responding to the emergencies. Um, even in, in traffic and such, um, they'll, they'll find their ways is kind of uh, the, the short answer. But also uh, knowing that, yeah, we are working to keep corridors, you know, streets open, corridors open, uh, travel to and from uh, public safety facilities like the hospital and others, uh, um, you know, traversable. Um, but we also, you know, expect heavy, heavy traffic that day. Um, you know, so um, some estimates are that we could experience gridlock out even out to the interstate and beyond. Uh, you know, and, and that will trickle into the city. Um, uh, again, I've kind of said multiple times I've, uh, that this. It, I look not look forward to seeing it, but it, I just, I, you know, imagining what that could look like is is hard for me to fathom. But. Um, we're, you know, from traffic management, we're going to have to rely on our traffic network in a lot of ways. Um, you know, the signalization, um, we're, you know, we're not going to be out there able to manually uh, manage traffic at intersections, things like that. that that's not going to be occurring, but um, 
you know, again, working really closely with public safety and the university, the hospital, others, um, making sure all those routes are available. Um, and so, yeah, uh, it's going to be a big day, and we're looking forward to it. This is a great day uh, for residents to um, walk to where they might want to go uh, or um, exercise some additional patience. I usually issue a little, you know, patience notice uh, before, you know, move in time for the university and all of that. And uh, this may prove to be uh, quite a bit more significant than what we see during move in or during graduation. And so uh, any any patience that we can offer um, people who are trying to navigate um, a new and different place would be appreciated. Great patience is always appreciated. We'll give our good old Hoosier hospitality, welcome all of our guests. Uh, the way I've been kind of saying it is, you know, it, based on the estimations, is we should expect it to be kind of like Ohio State football Saturday in town on top of graduation, on top of moving. Yeah. So we'll have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, next up is approval of claims. Are there any questions from the board on claims? Okay. Any public comments on claims? There is nothing on Zoom. Seeing none. Is there a motion? I move that we approve claims tonight in the amount of $1,169,439.78. Is Second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Roach? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. And if there is nothing else, I will call for adjournment.